Hi guys, Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now, Arctic Cooling are a company that I've liked for a very long time. They are a absolutely fantastic price to performance company. I wouldn't say they'd win any awards on the design front of stuff, but functionality for a good price, something like this, a free Freezer 11 LP that I got for about eight pounds. Perfect upgrade over an Intel stock cooler if you're not using a really high-end CPU. One thing I always recommend to people before you know you want to spend a fortune on fans if you just need an extra few fans with the case that you've bought because it doesn't come with many arctic f12s pwm fans can get a five pack of these for under 20 quid don't sound too noisy really good at cooling and that's probably what i'd say about arctic cooling they are just a fantastic price to performance company but they have started to make a few better looking parts as well so we've got stuff like the this is their newer sort of, this is the eSports cooler available with one and two fans as well from Arctic and they make a whole bunch of fans to go with them. And they've started adding braided cables and stuff, but still again, very good price to performance. So they contacted me recently um, and I was over the moon. I was really happy when they wanted to send some stuff out with me and I already have done an unboxing of one of their coolers. The only reason I didn't do a review is because there was already about 20, 30 reviews of the cooler. So I thought there wasn't any need. But then they sent me some more stuff and I really just wanted to, you know, do something with it and put it in a build. So I've decided to put it in my video editing rig. So here is the build that we're going to be using today. This is my Fantex P400 case. Now this is what I use for most of my video editing. It's my Ryzen 2600 rig. Sits below me under the desk here. Really like the case basically. It's nice and quiet, nice and compact, but you can still get quite a lot of hardware in it. Only thing I don't like is the front is the limited airflow. So you've only got these two grills here, which is enough if you've only got fans um, in the front. And as you can see, that's the little grill. This gets full up with dust really quick. Once you start putting radiators in the front of this, even if you've got push pull configuration, you get a real lack of air coming into this system. But other than that, really like this case. So we've got a Ryzen 2600 in here, like I might have just said. Going to try and overclock it to 4.2 gigahertz, which is a cooler they've given me. Going to put some of their fans in there. I'm going to show you all the stuff in a minute. We're going to do some installs. Then I'm going to show you my overclocking settings. So just a quick overclocking guide. Will the cooler be able to keep my CPU at 4.2 gigahertz? We are going to stress test. I'm going to do some video editing tests and I'll throw in some gaming as well. And then at the end of the video, I'll come back with my pros and cons of the stuff that they've sent me. I'm gonna tell you everything I like about it and everything I hate about it as well. So here is all the stuff that Arctic have sent me there. Now, I didn't really tell them what I was planning to do with this stuff. Um, they sent me the cooler a few months ago and there's an unboxing and install of this on the channel. And then they just messaged me saying, would you like to see some of our new fans and stuff that have came out? They'd seen that I'd use thermal paste in a lot of my videos, there are to come export, so they sent some of that over. But I never explicitly said, I'm just going to put this in a rig and I'm going to overclock my Ryzen 2600 to 4.2 gigahertz. Probably would have said, maybe send me the airflow fans instead of the static pressure. But, you know, I'm happy. I think with all of this stuff that we've got here on the table, no problem at doing it. Now, I'm not worried about running this at 4.2 gigahertz whilst video editing because I generally run my system at stock settings for video editing just so it's super stable. My overclocks are stable, but just, you know, you don't want to crash when you're in the middle of editing a video. I'm a, I'm a busy guy. But for gaming, I think this cooler will absolutely be fine. So firstly, we'll just have a quick little look. Their Arctic MX4 thermal paste. Now I actually use this for all of my CPU benchmarks. Pretty much any benchmark you see that has a temperature in it, I have put this thermal paste on it. This is the paste that I use. And yes, there are a couple of, you know, more, far more expensive thermal paste on the market. They're a little bit better. But like I said, this is a price to performance video. And Arctic MX4 is really always in the top five of thermal paste. And you're lo really looking at one or two degrees difference as well. Now these little two gram tubes, I've got one here. You know, you can get these for about £2.50. Four gram ones are about £4.50. And I think they do also like a 15 and 20 gram one as well really like this thermal paste and even if your cooler does come with some thermal paste in the box or if it's got pre-applied thermal paste remember a lot of first builders the one thing you normally come to me that you really worry about is um installing the cpu cooler um had someone recently on the discord server who was uh very panicking about doing it weren't you dan installing your first cooler it wasn't going on properly and you got a bit stressed just put that down so you can look at that take a little look at that in a second so over to the fans then now this fan i'm not going to be using but they just wanted me to show you this fan really and this is their new p range so this sits in between their f range and their bionics range now the p range of fans are generally 
all aimed at static pressure fans. Now they're available in white, but they're also available in black. Now in the black versions, they also do silent versions as well, which run at sort of like a fixed thousand RPM range. So they'll be super quiet. I wish they did the silent ones in the white as well. Um, I might get a couple more out so we can put them on a radiator, but this brings me over to my first complaint about Arctic. Let's have a look at the specs here. Now you can sort of understand most of that spec, right? You get that, RPM ranges, CFM, how much airflow, how much static pressure it's got, 2.2, very good. This is a £7.50 fan, by the way. Bearing looks nice, got nice stuff on the back. Noise level, 0.3 sewn. Do you know what that is? I, I don't know what that is because every other fan I buy has decibels written on the back. And I know it's a bit weird because you don't know how they measured it. You know, are they sitting five foot away from the fan or 10 foot away from the fan? How many fans have they got? You know, it's what case is it in? There's a lot of variables for noise. But basically, sewn is a different way at measuring sound. And just to put this into perspective, although it's not exactly the same, most people from what I've read have said that one sewn is about 40 decibels. So 0.5 of the sewn is 20 decibels. So these fans are going to be under... 20 decibels look at that this is a beautiful looking fan really nice now i actually like that this has got see-through fan blades on it because this doesn't have any lights and rgb if you're putting rgb strips in your case their colors will reflect off the white so they're almost a bit like a chameleon but not quite it will take on the color a bit and so will this as well so these will look really nice all white cable which is nice because my only complaint about the f fans even though they're dirt cheap is that they have the ketchup and mustard cable the four pin PWN connector and then room to plug another fan in and I'll sort of go into that in a second of why I'm not actually that much of a fan of this I don't like that little extra on there there but yeah there's the Arctic P12 £7.50 fan I forgot to say you know they go down to 200 rpm that's really hard to get for that price now the Bionics 120 is where it gets a little bit weird as you can see this is the F120 right which is an airflow fan and here we've got P140s which are static pressure fans now this cooler comes with airflow fans it doesn't come with their static pressure fans and if you have a look at their product page here you can see that there's like sort of a gap in between them and I think the static pressure ones were released a little bit later and that's why they wanted to send them out to me because I can tell that these are the airflow fans because if you look on the back of the box it's pretty much got all the same specs so these go to 0.5 zone so that's that 20 decibels 200 to 1800 rpm so again very good it's hard to find fans that go down this low for this price range um this is supposed to be a 15 pound fan but you can pick these up for 10 pounds so it's got a really big range on it let's have a little look oh you can see that 120 on there we'll have a look at the 140 version 140 version what are we up 0.45 so so a little bit a little bit less now these ones are picked up between 12 pound 50 and 15 pounds that's a huge amount of static pressure as well for the price these are going to go these will go very nice on radiators i've got two of these now it's weird isn't it i've got airflow fans on my cpu cooler and i'm having static pressure ones in the front but you know like i said i've got limited airflow in the front of my case so these might work out really well they're also available in red, green, and yellow. Would it be nice to maybe see a blue? Maybe even just an all black version, but look very nice. Look at the size of that braided cable. And again here, you have this four pin, four pin connector. And the reason I don't like this is, it's getting an old school motherboard out. Look at this. The reason I don't like this is because, let's say you're coming across to this header here. So you're gonna obviously come out of the back of your case with this, most likely, if you're doing tidy cable management. And then you've just got this thing sticking about. That's why I don't, it's one of those things, you're either gonna really like it, it's a really nice feature, but I'm, I, I don't like it. I would rather it not be there because it just makes for messy builds. And even though my case that we're putting in doesn't have a window, I'm gonna show you that, you know, this thing does look messy. I would personally, if I was buying these fans, and generally if you are buying a lot of fans, I would buy a cable splitter, they're very cheap to get. So here's the bad boy cooler that we'll be using. Originally retailed between 45 and 50 pounds, which I did think was a little steep. Um, and you can pick it up for 35 now. Now the single fan version still comes with enough connectors so you can put two fans on it. Now it's available in all the different colors I said with the fans, 
but the middle's always black, so it's just the trims on the fans. One thing I really like about this cooler actually is, I don't know if any of you have ever installed fans, and these things just pop off everywhere. See what I mean? I'm even doing this one-handed and on camera, just snapping them on. They're really easy to snap on inside a case as well. He says, snapping them back on. Okay, bit harder with one hand, but you get where I'm going here. These haven't popped off anywhere, so that's good. Very good to see. Anyway, let's get these installed in the system. So the fans are installed. I haven't put this cable in first because I'm going to loop it over the back, but this is exactly what I said. Normally you'd be plugging it in down here. So I'll just plug that in. Obviously you'd sort of hide this cable around the fan a little bit to make it look a little bit tidier. Let's just see. As you can see, we've got this thing just hanging about there. It's not going to be good, is it? So that's why I recommend extension cables and stuff with this. And you can see we've got the same over here. We've got this sort of cable mess going on. Now obviously like I said it's an on-window case but yeah I would definitely look at getting some splitter cables for these so I need to clean the CPU off. So we're going to apply just a small small amount of thermal paste. Do I normally do a little bit more for my Ryzen CPUs because it's slightly bigger die than the Intel. Now one thing with this cooler is you should probably install this out of a case it's going to do your head in if you try um, and install it in the case because it screws directly into the back plate and the back plate will generally fall out the way so you've got one hand behind your computer and it's a nightmare so how have I got mine not falling back a couple of game or blu-ray cases just stick it behind your case sort of lower it down in your hand and then we can install the cooler now to keep it all matching I'm definitely going to install the two fan version and obviously more performance from having the push pull configuration but i have also got i forgot to show it earlier here it is in red which would obviously go very nice with an amd red build as you can see exactly the same cooler just comes with the one fan but it comes with the right hole so you can put another fan onto it as well so i'm gonna get the cooler roughly into place and then what i always do is with all coolers you do alternate corners so I'm doing the bottom right corner now trying to line up a screw in here just put a couple of turns in because that just holds it into place and then I'm going to come and do top left and it's just so you're just sort of putting even amounts of pressure on it as you're tightening the cooler up that's sort of what I go for and you know trick first time corner installs do not over tighten your cooler you do not need to if you're doing this outside of a case i always say if you're installing a cooler outside the case don't give it that final tighten because you'll notice your motherboard will start to bend a little bit see that's you know as soon as it bites it's tight that is golden rule with cpu coolers and this is why i say buy some extra thermal paste because if you're you know worried about it Bear in mind, I'm just redoing this because I put the cooler on the wrong way round. Those little arrows have to be going in that direction <laughs> for the fans. And yeah, there wasn't, there just wasn't quite enough thermal paste on. So I just put a little bit more on. Just, you know, it just wasn't going to get it on one, wasn't getting thermal paste on one cooler. So that's why you should always get some extra thermal paste. So yeah, what it is, these spacings are a little bit further apart and I'll show you. See there, these are the, that's the rear fan. See there, that's the rear fan, it has quite a thick rubber stopper on it. These ones, these ones, these ones haven't got as much, much rubber on it. Yeah, so when I put this cooler on the first time, it wasn't tight. This one here, this front fan was really loose, it's obviously the way that these holes are set out, which was a royal pain in the ass. But yeah, look, these are really easy to put on. So I don't know how many, to, any of you out there that's installed quite a few coolers and these will start popping off. It's like, 
that I live in hell. And this is the better thing with air coolers though, because it does hide as much as I've been whinging about cable management. I'll just plug that in, stuff that behind there. Just jam all that cable edge in there and you can't see it. It's gone. Put the 1060 in this build for probably the last time, because I'm gonna get the 2060 next week. Or this week, depending on when I get this video up. Or even now, you might even see it in this video. But There we go. Let's get this system powered up and let's start overclocking. So we are in the BIOS now and um, I would definitely ignore the voltage up here because there's not this much volts going through the CPU at the moment because we are at stock settings. So we need to press F7 to go into advanced mode. Now I'm more just going to show you my settings rather than you know some full overclocking guide but i will talk about a few things of how i got there and where you can start as well now at the moment my ai overclock tuner is set to manual because i normally have my memory at full manual sub timings um so for this i recommend that you go to docp now that's going to set my memory to 3600 megahertz now i know that that's perfectly stable you may be using 3000 or 3200 and it's perfectly stable but for overclocking i always generally run at almost the minimum that the memory is sort of rated for so ddr4 is 2133 i'll probably just say it's 2666 this is just why we get our cpu stable after you've done that start pushing your memory you just want to remove everything out of the way basically from what you need to do um, and then i'm going to go to cpu core ratio now i would probably start at four gigahertz so for me i need to put in 40. that's somewhere i would start for you and I'd maybe just leave the voltage as auto, go into, um, go into Windows, run some stress tests, keep an eye on what your voltage is doing. But I know my CPU can do 4.2 gigahertz, so we're going to set that to 42. Some of you might top out at 41, but for the most you should be able to do it. So now we need to come down to voltage, which I'm going to set to manual mode. Now, I would probably start with 1.4 volts and see if you can boot. But here's the issue, and even though I use 1.425 volts, I found that when I was stress testing, I could see that voltage spike over 1.45, which I don't want happening. So what you need to do is, is get your voltage that you like, you know, set your voltage here, run some stress tests, but keep an eye on your voltage. If your voltage is spiking way over this 1.425, what I would do is what I've done is I have set CPU load line calibration. You need to be careful in here. Just do one level at a time. And for me, it's level two. By having it at level two, it keeps my voltage at around about the 1.42 volts under stress. It takes a huge amount of voltage to overclock rising. Now for four gigahertz, you could probably do it at around 1.3 volts. Start from there, work your way up. Me personally, I don't like to work up. I generally put in the max voltage that I wanna put in dial it in and then work my way down so i started with 1.45 volts and then just started working down and then mixing in a bit of load line calibration as well so then we're just going to go save changes and reset so we should now be booting into windows this asus motherboard takes a hell of a long time to post but then yeah just run some stress tests so now that everything's installed it's time to move on to some benchmarks then now for my front um intake fans and my single rear exhaust fan i have them set to a thousand rpm throughout um just a fixed range absolutely silent at this and i've thoroughly enjoyed using the fans so far but for the um cpu cooler i'm using the asus turbo fan profile so it's silent for normal tasks but has a nice bump up when things start to get hot. So what you're seeing here on screen is IDA 64, but we're running at stock settings. So this is gonna be 3.8 gigahertz turbo throughout, which it was able to maintain, no throttling whatsoever. As for the volts, it was running between about 1.18 and 1.2 volts. The fans for this test were running anywhere between 1000 and 1100 RPM throughout, and the temperature for the most, apart from a couple of spikes, was sitting around the 55 degrees mark. So this has no trouble keeping the Ryzen 2600 cool at stock settings. Moving on to overclocking. Overclocking Ryzen takes a huge amount of voltage. So we've gone from 1.2 volts all the way up to 1.425 volts. Um, and this is for 4.2 gigahertz. We've had to set LLC to level two, as I've shown you earlier. Now the fans for this test were maxing out, so just the CPU fans were running at 1800 RPM and the temperatures were sitting about 82 degrees. 
Now that's definitely hot, but still within specification of the CPU. And remember, Ida64 is a worst case scenario test. Moving on to the gaming then, Battlefield 5. Well, I'm playing at 1440p settings on a GTX 1060, which definitely isn't gonna stress the CPU out too much. So I've cranked the settings down to low settings so we can get the CPU usage up. As you can see, the CPU usage is quite high throughout. As for the fans, they were running anywhere between 1000 and 1200 RPM. System was very silent indeed. Really happy with it. And as for the temperatures you can see on screen, we're sort of always staying around the low to mid 60s as well. So there are all the benchmark scores. And one thing I forgot to do was do the Adobe Premiere um, scores in there. Now I did run some tests at 4.2 gigahertz and the CPU was cooler, was keeping it just above 72 degrees, which is perfectly fine. That is way within the specifications of this CPU. But still personally, I just prefer to run my CPU at stock for things like that. It's really is a personal thing, but you might want to, so the temps are very good. Temps are everything else we're good as well. Okay, we got up to 82 degrees with Ida64, but that really is a worst case scenario. And we were dumping a lot of voltage through that CPU as well. Gaming was perfectly fine though, and that's Battlefield. Other games are running much cooler. I've had a lot of other games running me anywhere between the high 40s and mid 50s as well. So overall, really impressed with everything. I'm really impressed with the way that it looks in the system as well, even though I can't see it. Very good looking parts. This is a big step forward for Arctic as well. Maybe nice if they make some RGB parts in the future. Hey, it'd be good to see. Um, and if you do make them, make sure you send them out. But anyway, this brings me over to my pros and cons of the parts. So we will start with the fans. Okay then, cons for the fans. I think you know what the con is because I mentioned it a hell of a lot of times in the videos. The PST thing that they call it, where you've got the extra little cable coming off it so you can um, plug more fans in. Obviously, that's really good that you can plug extra fans in it. And I know a lot of you are going to agree, like, well, you can plug more fans in and you don't have to buy a splitter cable. Splitter cables are about two, three pound for a free fan um, PWM splitter cable. Then you've just got one cable going to your motherboard and the other fans are running off it. Okay, it's an extra cost, but for anyone that wants it to look good, you're going to be buying those cables anyway. So that's, you know, maybe not so much of a con, but you're definitely going to have to buy them if you're packing the cases with these fans. Other than that, performance wise look absolutely fantastic really like them can be all be had for a very good price as well you can pick even the 140s up for almost close to 10 pounds 120s for 10 pounds as well um the rpm range is on them the 200 to 1800 rpm yes they're audible at 1800 rpm and i have got a silent case which means they're going to sound a bit quieter but they're definitely audible but you don't have to run them that fast and being able to go down to 200 rpm for that price very very good indeed only other little thing i would like to see them add with it was i didn't show them because i had to reshoot the footage you do get screws with them of course and they are silver and you can't see the screws but i know you people have ocd that have got a black case like maybe it's black on the back of the case you want black screws you know so for more premium fans i always associate them coming with nicer looking screws maybe some anti-vibration you know like the pins that you use i never use them but you know, some of you might want those. Braided cable's good though. I do like that they're using braided cables now instead of these horrible cables. And the fact that they've um, obviously on the white ones, they're all white as well. So yeah, fans really impressed with, really recommend them to anyone. You would like these fans if you don't want RGB. These would be fans I would buy. Um, the cooler, really like the cooler actually. I think now that they're a bit cheaper, it makes more sense to buy the two fan one. The two fan one works out cheaper. You can pick this one up for about £35 now if you look around. I think that's fairly priced. I think for £45 or £50 that it was when it first came out, you know, you're going to start looking at liquid coolers or like big, you can get a dual tower fan um, from Fantex for that price. Um, and then the Noctua coolers as well. So I think it's at the right price now. Um, love that the single one as well has the hole so you can put an extra fan in and comes with the pins as well. Love the all black all the way around. Yeah, really like the cooler. Definitely recommend it. You can do some overclocking with it, but obviously you're not going to be doing serious, serious overclocking. You're not going to be pushing Intel CPUs plus five, past five gigahertz. But yeah, overall, very impressive all the stuff. Arctic cooling, just very good price to performance. Now I would definitely check out Arctic Cooling, 
just they've got so many good things especially when you're doing your first build as well and you're getting everything spec'd out you know you don't want to be going to spend 150 pounds on fans or buying a 200 pound cpu cooler you don't want to be buying excessive stuff you want to be putting all your money into cpu gpu memory ssds motherboard they're all your things that you put your money into and you buy all that stuff later you buy those things a few months later so if you did want some extra cooling just some bits for now i definitely recommend arctic cooling thank you for sending all the stuff over um if there's any more questions about the stuff that was in the video today let me know but i'm gonna just go now because it's been a seriously long video and i'll be back with mrtx 2060 videos within the next week or so really so i'll see you then